of battle has surely swung Watford's way after their gritty 1-1 draw at Walsall in the first game on Saturday afternoon. However, the question hovering on quite a few lips here tonight, can third division Walsall pull off the shock result and reach the sixth round of the cup for the first time in their history? Walsall supporters in full force here tonight. Luther Blissett returns to the Watford team tonight, the man who scored the winner against Chelsea here in the last round. And he takes his place in this Watford side because David Barnsley, who scored Watford's goal at Walsall on Saturday, has turned an ankle in training. With Blissett and Mark Falco up front, John Barnes would seem likely now to operate down the left flank. That in turn has cost Gary Porter his place. Walsall have also a change forced on them. Their influential defender, Kenny Moore, picked up a hamstring injury on Saturday. Phil Hawker takes the number three shirt with Mark Rees coming into the side at number seven. And the good news for Walsall is that Trevor Christie has recovered from injury. But it was Christie who scored the penalty that gave Walsall the draw and brought about this replay. And indeed, the man who awarded that penalty, John Martin of Alton in Hampshire, is the referee again here tonight. So Watford get this fifth round replay underway. And there was a false alarm because one Watford player had gone into the other half of the field. But now it is underway. And Watford in the yellow shirts attacking the goal to our right. Walsall tonight in an all-white strip. Walsall lying 18th in the third division. Watford 11th in the first. But those sort of positions count for nothing on a night like this. Total commitment and a lot of courage do count for a lot. As Walsall now face this long throw from Watford. And a free kick given to the third division side. Who've won only one of their last five games. In contrast to Watford, who've lost only one of their last six. Miss it to Allen. Good reverse ball by him. There's Blessed on his way. Falco. Jacket spreading it wide to Waston. And Falco there waiting for the header. And Walsall under a little bit of pressure there. Falco once again for Watford. Deep cross to the far side. Barnes, good skill. Lovely skills there by John Barnes. Looking for the little cross in, but faced by Dornan, who concedes the corner. Skills there by Barnes, an early taste of what the Walsall defence on that side of the field might expect. Kevin Richardson then with the corner for Watford. Big John McClelland. He's in the box there, flicked on by Barnes, and somehow they winkle it off the line, and Walsall hardly know themselves how they failed to concede a goal. Such a scramble there after an important ball had been won by John Barnes. And the same again. No, that time Warsaw in defence were able to cope better with it. I think it was Malcolm Allen that had uh, a shot that was charged off the line. So, early pressure then on the third division side. Another long throw coming in. And another corner for Watford. Short this time for Richardson. Curled in, and Barber gathering an important ball. Claimed that he was hounded unfairly by Falco. And there was certainly a feeling in the Warsaw camp that Falco had uh, fouled the keeper when Warsaw scored their important goal on Saturday. A word there from the referee. Now suddenly at the other end, there's a chance for Warsaw, and they've scored! through Nicky Cross. What an amazing turnaround as Christie punches the air in delight. A long ball that beat the Watford defence, including Tony Coton. And an extraordinary start then to this cup tie. A long ball out of defence and Watford all over the place. Christie winning it in the air. It was lead on by Kelly. And suddenly, Cross is in the clear as Coton comes out. Nicky Cross pushes it just inside the far post. Well, 
also over the years have a fantastic record of cup giant killing is it going to be added to tonight just behind the pillar there just swung to the left of the pillar George Graham the Arsenal manager Theo Foley alongside him I expect to be fair they came here thinking they might have to do their homework on Watford for the next round at the moment it's Walsall in the lead the Arsenal management there Reese after this one Rostron holding his ground but it was Reese's header and well confusion there in the Watford defense under pressure from uh, Trevor Christie Steve Sims and Tony Cotton on quite the wrong wavelength and Walsall gets their first corner of the game to be taken by Craig Shakespeare it's a good dead ball merchant they've got a few in there of uh, Walsall Shakespeare again the cross comes in once more and Coton down and the whistle had gone Forbes who'd come up again from the back the number five and once or twice at the back also Watford rather have looked at sixes and seven a good clear header there but uh, he'd obviously been pushing down on an opponent to get that sort of height also ball this is Phil Hawker finding Nicky Cross Shakespeare whacked away by McClelland the chase is on again the dance, dance could be difficult and Malcolm Allen right in good work again by Barber the first time uh, the big centre half Graham Forbes has heard and he was completely beaten by that bounce and the little Welshman was on him Malcolm Allen did so well here but an excellent piece of goalkeeping down close to the body which is always a difficult one goalkeepers say and Barber did supremely well. So just a second from the right on the bench there. And the spectacles, Graham Taylor, the Watford manager. A little bit of worry for him at the moment. Blissett. And Blissett again. Walsall player, heart stretching and doing well there for Walsall. Gibbs getting the better of Cross, playing it into the path of Malcolm Allen. And now it comes obligingly for Blissett. And there was an opening there for Gibbs. And the fullback have made great strides to get in there. Half chances continue to come Watford's way, but they remain a goal down. Christie. Cross. And Shakespeare coming in there. Coton getting it. Forbes winning it in the air against Falco. Hawker away. Mark Rees, who's seen little of the ball so far. Barnes has seen plenty of it, and here he is again, with Rostron again making that break for him. Jacket. Forbes in very positively. And the ball going off for a Warsaw throw. Forbes possibly. Oh, he tried to get into the path of the on-rushing Barnes, but it didn't work out. Cross. Kelly making a break, but Rostron is across there as well. The bounce was kind to Kelly. Shakespeare playing it nicely again into the path of Kelly. And a warning again for Watford. First real chance we've had a look at this 21-year-old uh, who started his football career with non-league Albuquerque, driving in there against Coton. Co 
Houghton belting it forward again. They're playing time added on for injuries at the end of the first half. Barnes for Watford. Got past two. Finds Jacket on the far side. A cross coming in towards Malcolm Allen. Hawk is there. He's given a penalty. He's given a penalty by Hawker on Allen. Well, let's look again. There was a penalty in the first game, of course. That went to Walsall. Well, I couldn't see anything there. But from this angle, I certainly couldn't see it. And there's a booking, I think, of uh, Shakespeare. And Kenny Jackett will take the penalty. Seven goals this season, four of them the penalty spot. And very often, his, you know, sometimes he just takes a couple of steps only, but a few more this time. But Barber has been quite a barrier to beat so far tonight. But he's beaten this time. And Watford to immense relief all around Vicarage Road are back in it. Well, some thought it was a controversial penalty on Saturday that Walsall had, and many will feel the same about the one tonight. But the referee was right there, and now Watford are right there. Clark gets it back. Christie. A flick on there by Christie, or rather by Cross. So a very controversial penalty indeed has put Watford back on level terms as Walsall take another throw Richardson gets it away they were certainly unsettled by Nicky Cross's fourth minute goal but that might just settle Watford now Christie again time it's Richardson away whistle has gone with Nicky Cross having scored a sensational goal after only four minutes for third division Walsall who battled so well defensively with Fred Barber in great form and then right on half time that controversial penalty and the number 10 Kenny Jackett tucking it home to bring great relief to Watford half time then here at Vicarage Road what well, still the buzz back here at Vicarage Road as we welcome you back during the halftime interval was that controversial penalty decision just before halftime. As the ball's played in here, watch the two figures on the right there. Phil Hawker in the white, Malcolm, Malcolm Allen. Was there a push on the back? Well, the referee said yes, and he said a penalty. So we also then get the second half underway. They now attack the goal to our right. Remember, they're in the all-white strip. Quick throw then to Watford. Beaten finalists back in 1984. And this season have already beaten Maidstone United here. And Chelsea, we saw who've come in from round one, have beaten Chesterfield, Port Vale, Charlton of the first division, that was quite a coup, and Birmingham City of the second division. Allen, some backpedalling needed there, and the judge had to be right for uh, Fred Barber. He's had to be in good form tonight, but he was saying he spent the whole of last season in practice against Gary Lineker, and after that, nobody gives him the frighteners. Up at Everton, of course, before he joined Warsaw for £75,000. Christie, 
Her whistle. Jones. Walker. kick for Watford towards Falco. Good jumps required there in the Warsaw defence and Graham Forbes provided it. Here's Nicky Cross. Now Mark Rees, a real flyer. Here he goes. There's trouble here for Watford. There could well be. And Rostrand just got enough on him to uh, put the little winger out of his stride. again by Reese. I a, thought he had a bit of luck there, but no, he, he put it well wide of uh, Rostron, and then Rostron leaning into him a little bit, and Coton coming to Watford's rescue as well. Comes through to Allen, and out to Barnes. Good save, a splendid save by Barber. And uh, the feud he has with Falco, which I understand began at Fellows Park on Saturday, just flickered to life for a moment there. Barber furious with the way that Falco came in on him, but it was a tremendous piece of goalkeeping again, because Barnes hit it so well, grabbed beautifully, and Falco in on the keeper. And there's a problem for Warsaw. And Rick Graham Forbes, who's been such a strong man in their defence, is in a fair bit of trouble and they are waving on the Warsaw bench for somebody to play the ball out 
Well, he's belted it forward. Wouldn't that be amazing if it falls as a good pass? Indeed, it doesn't because McLennan gets it back. Quarter of an hour for the second half gone, and it won't be long, I think, before Graham Forbes leaves this scene. Can't get the ball out of play at the moment to get some attention for him is Malcolm Allen. Could be troubles here, but now with the corner conceded, the trainer surely will be allowed to come on. The referee might well claim that he's fit enough to go off the field and get his treatment. And in fact, that's what he's insisting. In fact, uh, Forbes is staying on the field. In fact, jumped there, didn't quite get to it, played in once more, and again there. And Malcolm Allen trying to force it home, and Walsall desperately get it away for another corner. And still the injured Forbes stays on. Goodness knows how they kept that one out. Another corner about to be taken. And... Malcolm Allen couldn't quite force it home. Here comes another corner now. Well, who do you think was there? Graham Forbes played back again there by Blissett. And a goal kick. Sub coming on for Tommy Coakley in the cap. The Warsaw manager as the gallant Forbes goes off and Ray Train, a former Watford player, comes off. applause from Watford fans who remember so many busy performances here for their own club. It's a cold night but they feel a bit more comfortable on that Watford bench having got back to 2-2. Barnes, Rostron, the overlap, pulled away nicely there by Hart. Shakespeare now the chase is on Cross versus McClelland and some pushing and shoving going on there and McClelland penalised the free kick given to Walsall for a moment they look quite dangerous there with just uh, two Wals uh, Watford defenders back Christian Cross right up there Shakespeare and Hawker, they claim a handball there, and uh, the referee could not possibly have seen, but he looked at the linesman, the linesman merely pointed to the corner flag. Well, we'll quickly have a look at this. And they claim a handball, it looked as though the referee and linesman were right. No penalty, corner given though, Craig Shakespeare with it for Walsall. Deeper one this time, and a good grab by Coton it needed to be because uh, Kelly was jumping dangerously. Twenty minutes left. And of course, if it remains level at 2-2, after 90 minutes we get 30 minutes of extra time. Is it? Falco comes for Blissett again. By Shakespeare. Now can Rostrum get to this one? Barnes. He did once more, and uh, Hart was there to get it away. Christie. Now cross on the chase. McLellan there first. Driven, and an excellent piece of keeping again. Save well, body fully behind that ball, Fred uh, Barber. It's a good ball, Barnes, through the legs of the defender, too. Too high for McClelland. Christian there, a handball. And a free kick given to Watford. A pure accident that handball by Trevor Christie. 
Still Peter Hart battling valiantly at the back. Shakespeare needed to turn quickly, but Falco's got possession for Watford. A nice turn by him and a cross in a deflection. Mark that Barnes in! 3-2! With a quarter of an hour to go. The applause rings out at last for Watford. Twice behind, twice level. Richardson having played it across there. Good work here by Falco. The deflection that took it neatly into the path of John Barnes. And Watford for the first time tonight are in the lead, 3-2. John Barnes, goal number 11 of the season for him and one that will have brought a great deal of relief all around uh, Watford. Not least on the Watford bench. over and done with yet and they've got a corner Walsall Paul Jones will take it a real utility player he's played in just about every position except goal now taking this corner he's done a good job in the midfield as well but McClellan gets that one away played by Shakespeare for Jones again played in there and they've done it well that's amazing Conceded the first penalty, gets in there with a diving header. And Walsall, incredibly, are back at 3 3. Well, what a night of ups and downs then for Phil Hawker. And what a remarkable cup tie this is. For the first time on the night, Watford looked as though they were in the lead and you thought the last quarter of an hour would be a formality for them as they coasted and before you could turn around Hawker's low stooping header has brought it back to 3-3 so Watford have some more work to do well no wonder the fans are flocking back to football when you get excitement like this on a cold night in Hertfordshire So, Hawker is the scorer of the third goal. Here's Sims. Blissett, lovely skill there by Luther Blissett. And an obstruction there by Hawker, a free kick to Watford. Barnes with it, floated in, Barber fisting it away, only as far as Jacket, Richardson, Barnes once more, charged down by Kelly, here's Malcolm Allen, Richardson making a good break, tremendous stuff there, and a great piece of defending again by Hawker, another corner for Watford, An important intervention, but a brief respite as another corner comes in and Barber fisting it away for another corner. What a brilliant cup tie. So, Barber again under more pressure as Watford take another corner. And it had gone, it had gone out, it had gone out already. Well, they can't believe it. They've been a credit to their club tonight, these Warsaw fans. And uh, a crowd of 20,350 here tonight.
just three minutes of normal time left. Kelly on his way. Can Walsall complete this shot? Plays it across there. Oh, my goodness, that was as close to an own goal as you'll ever, ever see. Steve Sims, under a lot of pressure from Trevor Christie, put it, well, the old cigarette paper routine. There couldn't have been more than room for a cigarette paper between that ball and the post. The full-time whistle has gone. This amazing cup tie where Jacket, Blissett and Barnes scored for Watford and Cross, Christie and Hawker for the splendid third division side Warsaw. And now it's down to the managers. Graham Taylor there, you can see in the spectacles and Tommy Coakley of Warsaw to try and they're in the cap there to try and get a few things together and ready for a period of extra time. We shall take a short break now. So Warsaw get this first period of extra time underway and Watford have made a substitution. They've taken off Malcolm Allen and onto the field now comes Gary Porter. It's certainly going to be a test now of nerve and stamina. And here's Falco. Looks as though he's got plenty of both, but the pass just reaching Porter. That's a lovely one played by Jacket for Blissett. Spreading it out a bit now. Richardson down the flank here. Train gets it away. Towards Kelly. It's Jones. And now Mark Rees. Poor ball on the end of it. Rostrin. Again to Christie. Train. And now this it. Barnes. Richardson. This it again. There by Craig Shakespeare. Keeping a very close watch on Luther Blissett. Score of Watford's second goal tonight. There's Barnes. Richardson's cross. Dornan getting it away. And uh, Porter trying to make some sort of progress down that flank. Gets a good little cross in. Barnes! His second goal of the night, but a really excellent piece of work here by Gary Porter. The ball looked as though it was going out, but what a lovely cross he screwed back there. And Barnes catching it on the volley to put Watford 4-3 ahead. And still the goals rain in on this remarkable cup tie. Well struck by Barnes. right off Warsaw at your risk and here they are again with Gorman and Warsaw in the meantime have now made a substitution their number 14 Gary Childs is on Mark Rees has just gone off now Porter played such a part in that fourth Watford goal Shakespeare. Christie. Sims away. Arms. Miss it. Falco. Easily taken by Dornan. Kelly trying to make something of it. Sims gets it back. And you think how 
close Walsall were to snatching it right on full time with Steve Sims so close to putting it into his own net. Sims away. Barnes. Christie. Cross, he's onside. He's got Kelly in the middle. And they are still... have got plenty to say for themselves, Walsall. And so often Cross and Christie are at the centre of it all. Christie putting Cross away here, putting a nice little centre in, and Kelly couldn't quite reach it. Shakespeare. Towards Christie. Train. Short for Kelly. What a good ball! And not it in by Christie! I don't believe it! But Christie and the Warsaw fans celebrate, and this astonishing cup tie takes another astonishing turn. Trevor Christie's second of the night, some good play here by David Kelly. And uh, Coton just got his hand to it, Christie finished it off. And it's back at 4-4. Four, four. There's the touch, there's the header. 4-4 four, four it is. That's the end of the first period of extra time. All right, there should be a quick turnaround. John Barnes, who put Watford ahead the start of that period of extra time scored his second goal of the game they made it 4-3 and then Trevor Christie got it back to 4-4 four, four. a lot of smiles for Trevor Christie and I think those legs are all a bit tired now but they have another quarter of an hour to go through and if it's level at the end of this quarter of an hour now, there'll be another game. And I think anybody who's been here tonight, if it does go to another game, will say, well, I must make a date to be there for that one. Now, what excitement await us in this next 15 minutes. There's Steve Sims with another long, long throw. Train struggling to get it away, helped by Jones, finds Christie, who's having a real battle there with Gibbs, trying to get cross on his way, but McClelland is lengthening his stride and getting away. Yes, it's a foul, a free kick. Sims planning it forward again towards Blissett. Great train for Warsaw. And Kelly. Cross onside. Christie waiting in the middle. Childs coming up fast on the far side. And Coton got it! And lost it for a moment. And in desperation, they hooked it away for the corner. Good run here by Cross and a shot that Coton couldn't really hold and Gibbs in desperation concedes the corner. It's a splendid new stand they've got here at Watford this season. Well, a throw now. About four minutes of extra time remaining. Coming in there, fisted away by Barber, helped on its way by Childs. Here's Blissett, and more problems possibly for Walsall. Blissett again, a great drive, but wide. I'm sure 
for the Warsaw fans. Just miss it, we see another. Gets it back here from uh, Gary Porter. They're on the bench. They're off the bench, the Warsaw management there, Jerry Sweeney and in the hat, Tommy Coakley. What a and he's played it to Ray Trey and he'll play it further down the line. The final whistle. And one of the most enjoyable cup ties for years and one of the most riveting comes to an end as the coaches embrace and the fans count themselves lucky to have been here on such a night. And Warsaw have done themselves, the third division, absolutely proud. John Barnes with the two goals, at times looked as though he might have made it safe for Watford. But this incredible Warsaw side come across to salute their faithful fans. And who knows what might still be lying in wait before this fifth round cup tie is completed. Trevor Christie and David Kelly, and as I've said before, a team of Warsaw heroes.